So I started a company called Bridesmaid for Hire. It's very odd, but strangers hire me to be their bridesmaid. So I'll go to the weddings, I'll be in the wedding, wear the dress. Yeah, and it's been like a weird career. I've worked hundreds of weddings. I'll wait for you. You just ask me to. Till my body's laying low, cold in the ground. It felt like all of my friends got engaged in my early 20s, around 23, 24, 25. Before I knew it, I was going to a lot of weddings every year for my friends, and I slowly became a bridesmaid. I was a bridesmaid so many times for my own friends, around a dozen times in just a matter of a couple of years. And I started to see that when I was behind the scenes at these weddings, there was nobody in the $72 billion wedding industry whose job it was to support the people getting married. A wedding planner does an amazing job planning the wedding, making sure everything looks and feels great, but there is nobody there to deal with all of the pop-up problems and challenges and sometimes drama at the wedding. After being a bridesmaid so many times for my friends, my roommate at the time nicknamed me the professional bridesmaid. And that's when I got the idea to put this idea out there to the world and see if anybody would hire me as their bridesmaid through a Craigslist ad. And that ad went viral. I got so many emails from people who wanted to hire me. I was working at my full-time job for about two years before I ended up starting Bridesmaid for Hire one Friday night on my own. And I was working both jobs for about a year and a half and I really loved doing both. Though it was extremely draining, I didn't have much free time, and I had to give up a lot of hobbies and also seeing a lot of friends. So it was really hard to juggle both, but a lot of what I did was split my weekends in half. I would spend the morning and afternoon of Saturday and Sunday working on my side hustle, and at night I would do anything else but work. So I learned how to create balance over time, though it certainly wasn't easy, and it took a lot of trial and error. And then one day I got laid off. And in that moment, I had to have a lot of courage because I had to look at myself and say, Jen, let's make this work. Let's turn this side hustle into your full-time job and let's figure out how to make that happen. When I started this business, it was less about the wedding and more about my love for people and supporting people. And through that, I've become someone who does adore parts of weddings. I love watching the couple come together. I love the celebration. I love the intimacy of it. But of course, there's parts of weddings that I never really thought were great, like how much money they cost or how stressful they could be. So I tried to make my business something that helped people during what can be very stressful times of planning their wedding. I think a lot of people don't realize they need a hired bridesmaid until after their wedding. Being a bridesmaid does feel like a job. It is a lot of work and it often costs your friends a lot of money. So a lot of people will hire me when they have friends to support their friends going through the process. And some people will hire me when they don't have any friends at all. Being a bridesmaid for hire is a job that has a lot of different dimensions to it. Simply put, I am there to support the people getting married as their personal assistant. I am there as that on-call therapist helping them with any type of drama or problems that pop up. I am the person who is the social director. Sometimes I plan bachelorette parties or I go to them. And finally, I am the peacekeeper, just making sure the people getting married and everybody else around them feels supported. Oftentimes when people hire me, they hire me to be that friend. I put on the bridesmaid dress, I walk down the aisle, sometimes I even give maid of honor speeches. One of my biggest challenges starting this business was that I was a solopreneur. I was doing all of this myself and I wasn't asking for help. So I was sitting with problems of, of how to really figure out how to take this business to the next level. I had all of these legal questions and I didn't know anyone to ask. I couldn't figure out accounting. I had all of these questions and I wasn't sure where to go for answers. And that was one of the biggest mistakes and challenges I made early on in my business. I overcame that by reaching out for help and I ended up finding a couple of mentors for free just by Google searching who not only were able to teach me new things but help me get an idea of how to run a business. What I started to see was that a lot of people didn't want to work for my company, they wanted to learn how to start a similar company. So I've had over 100,000 people apply to work for me and to be able to give them some help, to help them figure out how to start their own business, I started a training program where I will train people on how to start their own wedding business. And that was really popular because a lot of people were transitioning careers, were looking for something different and they needed a foundation and a structure to learn how to start their own business. 
This is a bride named Christina and Christina got married in downtown Manhattan on the water overlooking the Statue of Liberty and this was one of the first weddings I ever worked. And when I started this job, I was single. So I took a lot of advice from my clients on dating and how to date and just tips in general. And a lot of that advice helped me actually meet my husband. We ended up getting married in March on the anniversary of our fifth date on the sidewalk where we met. <laughs> so I didn't get to wear a dress and I definitely missed out on that. So when I see wedding dresses, I think, wow, I wish maybe I wore one. And if I did wear one, what would it look like? And then I just see this and I'm like, wow, this would have probably been the dress for me. I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned that I'm creative and curious and really courageous. I've also learned that I'm very stubborn, but I've learned ways to deal with that. I've learned how to reach out for help. I've learned how to double check myself and I've learned how to stop making the same mistake over and over again. You're not always gonna have the right answers. You're not always gonna know what to do next, but you have to keep trying something. Learning to be okay with experiments and failure and rejection is a huge part of having a successful business. One of the greatest days of being in this field and doing this job was about the one year mark when I was able to look at my business and say, wow, all I had when I started was an idea and it has turned into so much more. I'll wait for you. You just ask me to, till my body's laying low, holding ground.